This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. The mountains of Kenya are also called water towers. The water that flows down from them is vital to many Kenyans, their crops, their animals, and to the wildlife too. And the mountain forests are vital for helping to provide that water supply. If the forests fail, so does the water and the wildlife that lives in it. Here, hidden away, is a rare symbol of Kenya's forests, the mountain bongo. Can we save it and its valuable forest home? A big game hunter from the old days, Tony Seth Smith, used to shoot bongos. He's been attacked by buffalo when he was hunting, but bongo was always the main prize. I used to particularly like trying to hunt them. It, it was a hunt. It was not the killing of a bongo, which was the... Uh, the attraction, it was the, the challenge of trying to get close to an animal, probably within 15 or 20 yards of it, which was as near as you could get before you started to see any, even a part of the beast. And um, uh, with it being so alert, the chances are that it saw you or heard you before you'd any got anywhere near it. And uh, you'd track it for five, six, seven, eight hours and then there'd just be a crash and it would have gone. But it was the clearance of the forest that was really the problem for the bongo. It was the destruction of its home, plus no poaching, that reduced its numbers it so is, much. Uh, it's anchored here and it can't, it can't move. What's the future? Well, when my father came, there must have been uh, 10,000 bongo more in the country now, I suppose. There's probably a total of less than a hundred. And with the population growing as fast as it is and the forest being destroyed as fast as it is, I held out very little hope for them. More and more people want to use the forest for its wood, for its charcoal, but eventually it will run out and the water supply from those water towers will fail. The home of the bungo will disappear. There was a project to catch the last ones and send them to safety abroad. Joan Root thought it was wrong to do this, but Alan Root said they might all disappear in Kenya and at least there would be some abroad, perhaps to be returned later. In the meantime, poaching with snares and forest destruction continued. Far away, beneath the bare trees of winter, in an English zoo, the sign shows the visitors where the bongos come from. Will they breed here, a long way from home, looked at by lots of people? They're the ones that we saw before when one got out, That's right, it's gone between the two. Between the this looks like breeding behaviour. Back in Kenya, in the Abadares, how many bongos are left? There are plenty of buffalo for the visitors to the Ark. Here's the manager. Sooner or later, bongos will be coming down to this level, which is about 7,500 feet above sea level. So this is, could be a bonus but this one of the antelopes that is very, very beautiful and most of the plants like seeing it. Meanwhile, a bongo in bronze can be seen on the bar of the ark. But the elephants are outside.
Here's a way to bring the bongo back. Oh, exciting. <laughs> The Rhino Charge annual event has raised a lot of money for a fence right around the Aberdares. There are plans also to fence Mount Kenya, Iburu and parts of the Mao, if the money can be raised. This fencing separates the wild animals from the people and helps to protect their crops. It may also help protect the rare bongo hiding in the forest. But what's happened to those abroad in zoos? Don Hunt. We've been promised from America up to 100 bongo, but I don't think we'll need 100 bongo. I think probably 60. Oops, there you go. Now just take a look in there. That's a perfect specimen. He's fully mature. Previous warden on Mount Kenya, Bongo Woodley. Yes, that's his real name. Bongo being renowned for being elusive, it demonstrates that actually they can survive against all sorts of adversity. So I'd say that's actually, that's quite a positive, that's actually a very positive thing because the fact that they are still present and almost impossible to spot and yet there they are surviving, you know, even if only as a, as a nucleus, I think that's, um, that's good news and I think that will be quite important for the success of reintroduction itself. Africa's most rare antelope, the mountain bongo. How can it be saved? The answer is a combination of efforts, which, if they work, will be an inspiring example around the world for rare species. It's a team effort, both here in the orphanage and in the wild. We have to put the food separate because they are good fighter. We have the dominant females, the dominant males, and they don't, they don't like to eat together so fight for food and that's why I do separate them. They are a symbol of Kenya's vital forests for young Kenyans and their future. Uh, they are now appreciating the bongo mainly through the young students who visit the orphanage. Uh, they are now trying to appreciate uh, what we're doing. They appreciate the bongo and uh, we know that uh, with the appreciation the bongo is going to survive back to the wild. From the orphanage office, David takes care of many sorts of animals, but bongos are the star attraction. And since the whole program began, we have had seven successful bats, which uh, is quite is stabilizing quite very well. Most of them, all they need is um, the mother to be well fed and that will result to um, good pro production of milk, that's lactation, and they will bring up very, very strong, healthy young ones. Welcome to Endabibi Primary School, not far from Lake Naivasha, not far from the Aburu Forest, or what remains of it, an extension of the much reduced Mao Forest. Here the children have been greatly encouraged by Solomon who tells them about a small group of bongos up there in the forest that has not been cleared. But can it stay that way? Its future is in their hands and so is the future of those few surviving bongo, symbol of the trees and the water that they provide. It's the Endabibi Bongo Club, young and old trying to help the bongo and the Aburu forest. Very good. So you are very free to talk with the, uh, the teacher in charge, yes. with the pupils, go out of the classroom. We conserve the animals, the animals, especially the bongo, uh, which are becoming exit. I am the beauty and the heritage of our nation. Why do you clear my homes? Don't you like it when visitors come? Charity begins at home. Are we going to sit back and watch the baby turn into a desert? 
action speaks louder than words. Let's join hands and fully participate in reviving our environment. I Fade Motahi, I'm in the front line because I'm proud to be a Kenyan. Thank you. Some forest is left on the top of Iburu, <laughs> but new growth is needed. Baby trees are the answer, as the master in charge of the project explains. This is the practical uh, gospel about the conservation that we are having. We have about 7,000 seedlings which are ready to be planted. We also have about 10,000 which are not yet ready to be planted, therefore we have 70,000 currently. Uh, in this nursery we have indigenous trees and we also have the exotic one. Uh, though we encourage indigenous because they are very good with our environment or the environment where they are we are, they are doing very well. We, we are trying them all. These uh, trees, we have been able to raise them due to comparison of the school, the pupils and the teachers. Uh, the only challenge that we are having is about water. The people, their crops, their animals are dependent on the water supplied by those water towers. The sun is part of the solution. Via solar panels, small lights can be powered, as Solomon demonstrates. Mobile phones can be charged too. <laughs> <laughs> the way communities change could affect the bongo, the real thing. When I was walking, I saw them live, three, four males, and uh, four, they were from four males and uh, two females and one child about uh, three to four months old and it was fantastic for me to see them live but I did not do anything because we have trap cameras in the forest. The trap camera is, is set up and it takes a picture every half minute or so day and night and um, it, it works on uh, infrared um, movement of an animal, so every time... Mike Pretty John uh, in the Aberdares has coordinated bongo to, conservation efforts for many years, to, tree planting, to, uh, bongo schools, Manini, and now over 10,000 local people are involved. Ranzi, Peter Maneni reaching bongos, some 13 uh, schools uh, with films uh, in the Mao, uh, Iburu, Aberdares uh, and Mount Kenya areas. Uh, Set it up and show films Many children the, uh, have never seen big wild animals like elephants or lions, certainly not good. bongos. But they made their own in uh, a competition. If anything can save the situation, it is the education of young local people. They are the future of the forests, its water and its symbol, the mountain bongo. Uh, this is a, a section of the southern Labadares, very rugged country. And it's where we've got one small group of bongo that hang out in that area. Because the number of bongos are so small, there is the problem of inbreeding. And so genetic DNA samples of dung and tissue must be collected. These are being analysed abroad, a complicated and expensive process. Position. Communication in these dense mountain forests is crucial. Tracking bongos needs special skills and it's not an easy place to operate. <laughs> Experienced men, some perhaps originally bongo hunters, risk being charged by buffalo and attacked by poachers. Not only are they fighting to save the bongo, but to save the forests of Kenya. Many others, be they on Mount Kenya, the Aberdares, the Mao, 
or Iburu or abroad are involved in that challenge for trees and water and it can be done. <laughs>